Okay, with simulation, sequences are very handy. They save you a lot of time and uh, uh, save your hand from getting tired from typing. So there's a couple of ways to do sequences. The sequence function itself is very effective, and the sequence function in its simplest form has three arguments. Uh, the starting point is the first argument, the ending point is the second argument, and the increment amount is the third. So here we're saying create a sequence from 0 to 1 in 0.1 increments. So it does. So we have a, a vector, it returns a vector. Remember, a vector is the default structure, 0 to 1. We could also achieve the same result calling the sequence function like this. Create a sequence 0 to 1, but make them 11, make the vector 11 long, equispaced, in which case it returns the same thing. Now note, note this is an expression, correct? So when I execute this, it R evaluates it, returns the result, and then it's gone. It's not still floating around our workspace. An expression simply gets evaluated and the result returned and that's it. If you want it to hang around, if you want it to be permanent, you have to couple an expression with an assignment. You have to save it in a variable somewhere, otherwise it's only present for a split instant and then it's gone. Okay, the, the REP function, which is almost always referred to as repeat, but it's not, it's replicate, it's actually replicate, does, does just what you think. That is, it, it, in its simplest form, it, it performs some sort of replicating activity which is designated in the second argument on the first argument. So if I say rep 5 on 1, it just creates a vector of five ones. If I say rep on the sequence one, two, five times, it repeats one, two, five times. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. If I say rep on the sequence one, two, three times one, two, three, now this might give you something different than what you think. It doesn't repeat one, two, three, three times. It repeats one once, two, twice, three, three times. If I say rep the sequence one, two, each one twice, then you get one, one, two, two. Here I'm saying, note what I'm doing. This first argument actually is creating a vector. So the object that's being replicated is the vector, the text vector, the string vector, ABC and I'm replicating it twice. So when I do that, we get ABC, ABC. Okay, so why, why do we show you this? Sequence and replicate really are, are your friends when it comes to simulation. As our sample, as our, our poise, our norm, um, all of the other uh, sampling uh, distribution functions that we'll encounter. So you, it's good, to, good to good to be aware of that. Okay, so how do you extract elements? Well, the most common way is indexes, sometimes referred to as subscripts, but they're they're really indexes, is what they are, and they indicate the relative position of each element in a in a structure. Okay, for example. There's an object in R, it's an R native object, letters. And the lowercase object, the, the, the object of lowercase letters is just simply all of the uh, lowercase letters in the alphabet. If I express this, it's uh, A through Z lowercase. If these were uppercase, L-E-T-T -T, uppercase, we would get a return of the uppercase letters. If, if I just if I say, well, I just want to see A through H, I could use a subscript of the sequence 1 to 8, and I could store that in X, and I execute that assignment, and then I we evaluate X, 
and sure enough, it's the first eight letters. Now, subscripting, although it may appear very, very easily understood and very um, non, non, it has very non-assuming appearance. It doesn't appear to be that powerful, but it, but it really is. Subscripting, indexing, your ability to access any element or any sets, subsets of elements in a one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three, four, five-dimensional structure is really very powerful and something you use all the time. And you can do it not only through the numerical location, the address, if you will, of the item, you can also do it using conditions that evaluate to true and false. Now, a, a, an index, a subscripted index can be anything. It can be a function. You can put functions in here. It can be data sets. It can be anything that evaluates to a number. It must evaluate to a number or set of numbers or to trues and falses. And that sounds very limiting, but actually there are very few limits to what you can do with indexing and subscripting, as we'll see. Why do I spend time talking about this? It sounds very simple. Manipulating your data sets, no matter what you end up doing with R, no matter what your position is, no matter what you do with R, the one thing all the, all the R users have in common is they're going to spend 50, 60, 70 percent of their time manipulating their data sets, getting them in the right form for whatever esoteric function they're going to operate on them. So you need to know how to do this. You need to know how to do subsetting and so forth. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it in this course, but it is important. So here we say the fourth element of X is the letter D. Here we say I want to see, remember X is just the first eight elements, first eight letters, lowercase letters. So here I say I want to see elements four and five. So it returns D and E. Well, here's something that gives you a, a, a preview of the, what are the complexities of subscripts that you can actually build. So here we create a variable which is a vector 1, 5, and 7. But now remember x, we have x, here's x, it's up here in our workspace, right? x is this vector. We can apply i, which is a vector, to x to select the first, fifth, and seventh element. And so it does. Here we, here we manipulate x. Here we create x. We'll create a sequence 0 to 20. And note here, now I'm putting in two lines, two commands, two statements per line. Generally, R, which is an interpreted language, uh, executes the commands that it encounters line by line, thinking the assumption is that each line is a distinct, complete, entire, syntactically correct statement or expression, except when it encounters a delimiter like this one, a semicolon. A semicolon is a delimiter that means the statement you were evaluating has just ended, and whatever is on the other side of the semicolon is a new statement. So you can put more than one statement on a line using semicolon. So here, now I'm using assignment and I'm putting X on the other side so we can see it at the same time. Now I could achieve this also um, if I did this. If I just execute the assignment statement, nothing, nothing gets returned, right? That's why I'm putting X on the other side. Or you can take an assignment and you can nest it in parentheses. If you take an assignment and you nest it in parentheses like this, then it, it performs the assignment and then it evaluates the assignment because you put it in parentheses and so it returns the result. So this is really the same command and some people prefer nesting it like this as 
as this. This will execute two commands. And most people use this one. Okay, so now x is 0 to 20. You can use subscripts in two, 0 to 20 in two, 0, 2, 4, 6 to 20. You can use subscripts to assign or override the elements. So now the fourth element of x is 6. We can make it, and this is not a text string, this is na, means missing, missing value. So we say assign na to the fourth element. And now when we look at x, sure enough, it's na, which means the real value is missing. We don't know what it is. Or we could do this. We could say assign the a vector 6 and 7 to the fourth and fifth element. So now, sure enough. So you can do some subscripting's very powerful. And every data structure is has dimensions, has characteristics that allow it, allow the individual elements to be accessed through the through the indexes. Okay, so here we again we say i is the vector 357. And now we're saying take x, and remember what x looks like. x looks like this, 0, 2, 4, 6, 7, 10, and assign 0 to the 3rd, 5th, and, and 7th. And that's, that's what it does. So now the 3rd one, the 5th one, the 7th one. So you get kind of an idea what you can do, okay? So... Um, there are easier ways. Some other things you can do with subscripts. So here we create x again, uh, 0 to 20 and 5s. So it's got these five elements. Here we say make i 1 and 5, vector of 1 and 5. Here we're using a negative subscript, a negative subscript. And this, this uh, is really counterintuitive. It doesn't mean go to a negative number, and, and it doesn't mean delete that item, which some people think it does. It means return all of the other items except this one. That's what it means. So when we evaluate x to the minus i, x right now is 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, but x and i is 1 to 5, x to the minus i is everything except the first one and the fifth one. So if we assign that to y, then y is a vector of 3, 5, 10, and 15. Okay, so much for that.